Yeah. My brother Juju. Hey, it's two bro Chop Chop Pain Pain. Yeah. Ashes, also known as John Anthony. That's our brother Ashes, John Anthony, and his brother Zermato. Hey, what are we doing? What are we doing? Always. Uh, <laughs> okay, I was going to ask you, uh, you saw Bloodhound is like. They are the most best at picking up scents. They're, they're one of the best. best. One of the best. Yeah, they're one of the best. There's a flap, uh, emerald flap in the nose, and theirs is overly developed, so they're taking in more scent. And a lot of people don't know that the scent goes in one nostril, hangs out, and then comes out the other. Damn. So for a bloodhound with that big droopy face, it goes in and then it comes out, but it kind of sticks around, so they're able to hold, retain the scent longer. So for, you know, they they definitely have a more developed smell than. Most dogs, but the, we're talking. You know, the dog is probably 400 million scent receptors to our four million. Yeah. Didn't you say they live the world through like how their how they taste, like through their tongue? That's why you always licking stuff. Yeah, their tongue, their ears, uh, the nose. I mean, a oh, dog is is a lot of math and physics too. You got to think it would be the equivalent of us going through our going through life on our hands and knees. Things are coming directly at them. They're doing math and physics on everything. Right? We see a step. They got to be able to calculate their speed, the height of that step, how high they're going to have to raise their, their, their paws in order to clear it. So, you know, they're really, really not geniuses. So. Why do you think people would say that they're men's best friend? Or are they women's best friend, too? Yeah, I think maybe I man, think mankind. they say man, they mean all of yeah, us, right? Mankind. Manity, just mankind's yeah. best friend. In my experience, women, is, women tend to be better trainers. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Boom, my so experience, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. if yeah. I were looking for... Uh, a trainer, I would probably, I mean, obviously I think I'm the best, but I think on average women, <laughs> women tend to be great because right. they don't take it personal. I got, uh, I got men in particular, law enforcement agents that I train with, uh, yeah. train, you know, train their dogs, and they're still upset about something that happened in 2018. They just hold on to it, you know, they take it personal, whereas a woman can have a, a failure with the dog and be like, Moving on. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they tend to be a little more empathetic in my, in my experience. Uh, but I think when they say man's best friend, the dog is developed. There's a lot of different theories. Not a lot. There's three different theories. But I think your statement about man's best friend comes from the the canid, the wolf, hanging out around our uh, uh, early developments. You see and movies like trash. Lassie and stuff too. And then it's like all the movies. It's always like a little boy with his dog, and that's like yeah, the right. first part of the movie when it's like, right. oh no, not the dog. Right. Yeah. Uh, they, I think it's a mutually you know beneficial saying, relationship. But they, I, they ate our trash and hung out around us, and then they had babies, and those babies learned to hang out around us, eating our trash. Yeah. And now I'm going out to hunt, and you're with me so that you can pick up the remains, right? As the dog, and over time they've developed developed in a way that the wolf species uh, hasn't. It, so, well, isn't it to not to cut you off? Isn't it too uh, like a tale of two brothers that was raised by wolves? I've, I've like, read that story. I don't know how true it is. It would be. It might be a little, a little fabrication, but you know, because wolves are very uh, primal creatures. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe if you had an uh, unlimited amount of food that you could supply the wolves with to uh, yeah, not right. be food yourself, right, 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 it could possibly right, right. work. But wolves don't particularly like eye contact. Like uh -huh. I work with a ton of wolves, so when I walk into a wolf sanctuary, I'm generally on all fours. The alpha, which in 80% of my cases is a female is going to come up, they will usually mount me, right, and then they're going to lick inside my mouth, right. and that's to figure out, one, who I am, where I've been, what I've eaten that day. You got to let them do it, though. You, you can't let have them do it, Because there's about, <laughs> at least the sanctuary I'm going to, there's about 80 wild other stuff, wolves everybody. all wild watching stuff. this. I'm letting them do it. Right, so there's uh, 80 other wolves all watching this. There is a guy up on the tower with the tranquilizer gun. And you, how many times have you done this? Um, four, five. 40? God yeah. damn! <laughs> but the guy on the on top of the tower with the trank gun, that so gun takes about right. 60 to 90 seconds to work, the tranquilizer. The wolf needs about 6 seconds. Uh, so uh, even that doesn't save you. So they go through that process. Afterwards, she's going to, you know, okay, you check out, walk by, give me a little bump, and go about her business. And uh -huh. then the other wolves will come and interact with me after that. So if I see a wolf, I need to avoid eye contact. Well, they're going to avoid eye contact naturally. The wolves, coyotes have learned that proximity to humans is dangerous. So they tend to not like us. They see us and they go the other direction. When you see I think they got a point. wolf attacks, it's mostly movies. There's not a ton of wolf attacks. I'd say probably less than 100 per year. Oh, okay. So nine times out of ten, especially if they're not in the pack, they probably just run away. Right. They're going, they're uh, going away. All right. The dog thing started as a break. 
from music. I just felt like felt like I was getting burned out, and then watching the transition happen uh, from people wanting to be the best at the craft to wanting to be the richest person in the craft to then wanting to just be acknowledged and be, be famous. I don't even know how financially motivated these, the younger generation is, but I went to a show in Hollywood. The dude was dressed up, uh, a guy on stage, the rapper had on a wedding dress, and they were throwing wedding cake into the audience. And at one point he pulled out what I imagine was a real gun. It looked like a, a P30, PL30, I don't know. But he had it out, which was like, okay, that's serious. But then he put it in the girl's mouth. He had dancers on stage, and he put it in the girl's mouth. And she was like, Damn. deep throat in the, the gun. And then he was doing it, and I was just like, all right. You know, like, reached that I moment where that? you're like, I don't <laughs> where, you, chasing, where, where do you go? Where do you go? Yeah, where do we right? go from this? Where so I left, and that night was kind of like, yeah, I think I'm going to do music on my terms, you know, write for other people maybe. But yeah, it's something like cloud chasing now, man. Yeah, and I don't mind, you know, if you want to wear a dress, if that's who you authentically are, you should be that person. But yeah, if you're doing yeah, it for. I think that's cloud, what cloud, yeah, that's yeah, you cloud know. chasing will right there. Yeah, it is what it, it is. Just stop being see. about the music. And I think. Unfortunately, the younger generation, these guys aren't paying attention because the guys who are the most focused on the music are the guys with the lion's share. Yeah. Drake is still known for the music, yeah. right? Even if you don't like him. He's not known for the antics. Yeah, the shenanigans. I feel yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's complicated. Takashi's and these guys, I think, are uh, they're just toxic people who've been given a platform to spread that toxicity. So I, I'm worried about dude because he knows he's in over his head. You know, the money ain't coming in like it was. And, you know, you walking around a marked man playing a game and you've sent a bunch of people to prison. Like, a bunch of people lost their fathers and their uncles and their sons. And, and these are all these serious guys. Got a whole gang on your head. Yes. On both yeah. coasts. Yes, they got challenges. And Chicago. They, and Chicago. Chicago. Right. I don't want that problem, no. no. no not at all. Because yeah, it's not going to be... Some famous dude that walks up and hits him. It's gonna be. And he pissed off uh, Jay Prince and him in Houston. Too. Right. I don't yeah, think this generation. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this generation understand the difference between being brave and being smart. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, you know, they be talking about let your nuts hang and all that. But it's it's the difference between being smart and brave. Like I don't know. Like, I don't know if he's either. I think a lot of these dudes just have a death wish uh, to prolong man, suicide. Man. Whether it's the, the drugs that they doing now. Yeah, or what he's doing, him. I think he just yeah. maybe he's not brave enough to kill himself, so he's gonna do suicide by gang member. Man, I do that all the time. I'll be like, I'll be like, I'm the old dude now, cause I'll be looking at the stuff. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, that's wow. probably cause he just wanna go out a legend that bad, like cause probably he, probably, he came from nothing and he's like, what do I gotta do? I have a legendary story, cause my life wasn't shit anyway. And so when you look at that, then he's like, well, what would be the craziest story or the greatest story some people will remember you by? But then so are you like, that's just like antics. You probably don't even give a fuck about he's that. Saying he's saying he's a hustler and this is all about money. Okay, well you got it now. You got kids. You got people who care about you. They disappear at this point. Who cares? The royalty checks is going to keep coming in. That's the ego. Ego. I want to got out of jail this one time. Straight up. Yeah, for sure. But the one over there to the Dominican tomorrow. Republic where he shot that music video at, where he uh, paid all the kids and paid everybody yet. He was like, I already got y'all money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> y'all hide me. Hide me. Y'all don't fucking hide me. <laughs> this is, unfortunately, it's going to be some 12, 13 year old, 16 year old kid trying to make his rep. Doing the same thing. And knock him off. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Damn, man. That's how it usually happens. Yeah. Well, you don't even see it coming. Man. Right. He probably know in his heart, too. He probably sitting next to his future killer right now. And uh, they say most people get killed by somebody they know. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, we don't want to speak that. And hopefully he changed his direction. Charlamagne said that a year ago. Everybody seen or a lot of people seen that interview. Man. Yeah. He just, he keeping it up. He still putting pressure they on him. They called him a hater, though, when he said it, though. That's the cold part, man. Oh, Charlamagne's a hard dude, man, because yeah. my issue with him is the way he treats a lot of the younger black dudes, right? Like, even if you don't like the music, like, he could be in your house taking your shit. Right, right, right. right? He's in the studio trying to put food on his table. Okay, cool, but I've seen him kind of sun a lot of dudes and be very disrespectful, but then when he get gangsters in that studio, it's a completely different Charlamagne. You gotta stop disrespecting each other on these platforms, yeah. whether you agree or not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He that's does, true. he has good insight. Pull, pull, pull your boy to the side, holla at him, call him. Man. Right. right. You gotta eat in person, holla at him. Really, yeah. If you're really concerned about yeah. my, my well-being and, like, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. don't you sure slap you on Because you put a guy in a position like that, he gonna have to defend himself. Yeah. Don't nobody wanna get sunned on camera. You know, you know what's crazy is I'm taking this course called Verbal Judo. Oh, 
as I develop my body to be a, a weapon, I need to make sure that I'm being responsible with that weapon. So I'm taking this class called Verbal Judo, and that's actually part of what the judge ordered right before she threw that bullshit case out against me uh, on the terrorism. She said, uh, did you swear at him? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, why? And I said, uh, I lost my cool. She said, I want you to take this verbal judo class and send me your graduation certificate. Wow. So I took this class, and it just, like, as I'm taking this class, I'm going through the list of the homies I lost and the situations I've been in in my life. And I'm like, yo, if 1% of my homies had read this and taken this course, 200 people will still be here. Wow. It's that serious. I urge both of you guys to take it because it's all about mm -hmm. de-escalation and letting right. people save face. And the book was written by a cop for other cops, but when you read it and apply it to your life, I mean, it's kind of like, if you if it wouldn't work on the streets, it yeah. wouldn't work with your mom, you probably shouldn't use it on the streets. I, I, I've been working on that the last couple of years. Well, I need to take that class because I can be more advanced. Like the other day, I went to get an order, and uh, I opened the door and let this older lady in, and it was a guy in there, he was talking to somebody on the phone. So I got an important phone call. I went all the way to the back, but I could just, you know, I really, I'm really in tune with feeling people's energy. Like, like I got, I, I imagine I got good discernment. So I come in, I can. The guy looked at me. I said, Hey, how you doing? And he just like gave me a crazy look. So I could already feel he's, he wasn't vibing. With me. I went all the way to the back, and I was on the phone like talking. I'm talking like this, right? And then he just like, you know, he hear like I'm talking about like have a political conversation. And I guess he didn't like what I was saying. So he looked, he, she was talking to the lady and he stopped and said, hey, he said, he said, keep it down, bro. I can't even hear it right here. He was like, keep it down. And I could tell his energy, he wanted to say, shut up. And he was like, keep it down, man. You know what I'm saying? And then he see me stand up and he was like, hey, man. He was like, relax, relax. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, my bad. I didn't know it was that serious, dude. So then I just, I'm chilling, but I'm still talking. I'm still talking the same value. And he don't say nothing else. He asks her what she want, all that. So then I come up and he like, hey, you got to call him with her? And then, he, and then I was like, I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I seen you preparing and stuff, and you just looking at me. I'm looking at him. I'm like, I ain't finna say nothing until they address me. And then he started trying to talk aggressively to me again. And then I was like, hey, my man, I was just waiting on you. I don't want no problems, man. And, I, and he was like, you got the number? And I was like, I was like, this is the number right here, man. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, oh yeah. And then he just threw the stuff on the counter. I said, okay. I grabbed it and I said, hey, listen, man, have a lovely day, man. <laughs> so, hey, dude, that's beautiful. I said, hey, right man. I said, stay cool in here, man. Don't let nobody take your cool, man. And he was just like, he just, he just, you could tell he was just fighting it. And I was like, I was like, damn. So, you know, you know, you get more bees with honey. And I, I just been working on that because you, you know, younger me would have been like, man, what's up? What's yeah, good yeah. with you in here, man? Yeah, yeah. What's your I'm problem, man? Yeah. Yeah. I knocked something up. over in there. Yeah, so you know what I mean? Turned up. But I was like, nah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hard part. Yeah. But I think when you read the book, you'll see uh, it's based on Eastern philosophy. Because uh -huh. the guy who wrote it yeah, was yeah. a black belt in karate and judo. Yeah, so he wrote it from that uh, perspective. And the samurai is always actually looking for conflict not to engage it, but because that means he's drawing more energy from the universe right. and it's an opportunity for him to work on himself, yeah. right? And if you view the person on the other side of the equation it being aggressive, if you view it as an opportunity for self-development, then you start looking forward to these opportunities because you're just sharpening yourself. So now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even on the way here, we ran into a situation exactly that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, I was like, hey man, uh, I didn't mean any disrespect by that, and I apologize if that's the way it came across. And like, I was, where the fuck are you learn to drive at? And I was like, in a parking lot in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> and like, that throw him over, that throw him over, it's over. And I was like, it's anyway, over. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he probably like fucking crazy. Yeah, but they could have went somewhere. And with the training yeah, and the dogs, yeah, like I got to yeah, be mindful yeah. of the fact that if I do get into a physical situation, the chances of me hurting that person are substantial. The chances of my dogs hurting that person yeah. are substantial, so I'm just trying well, to point Papa out. told me, don't trouble trouble till trouble trouble you. Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of stuff is just self-defense, because that's the best The best thing is just to not be to avoid the conflict. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can de-escalate, because if it's a fight, sometimes both y'all lose. Sometimes Most nobody time. winning that shit. Most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Because just all the repercussions that come after, like, even when you win, yeah. it just be some stuff you don't want to deal with in paperwork, and it, like, last, like months or a year after you feel what I'm saying yeah. or it goes on for life if it's a lifelong beef and it could have just been something where you, you avoided the situation and it's just that's what the judge said to me part through your day. she said you swore at him and while I agree 
that you probably didn't say what they wrote down in that statement, mm -hmm. that was them filling in the blanks based on your energy, uh, based on your presentation. You may not yeah. have said stupid moment, you know, but yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. he heard based on your tone. Yeah, so she, right. And she was like, and in this situation, your presentation, even though it's fine, it's going to get wiped off your record, all that, your presentation cost you $22,000. In terms of bail and attorney. So you didn't really win at the right. end of the day because so like, like, I took the twenty two thousand dollars and hit. I could have just avoided the conflict. I said, just, hey guys, you know what I'm just bless the owner. Hit him with the Buddha bless, you know, yeah, Cristo, yeah. Cristo Negro bless. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hold it on, Cristo Negro bless, and then you just go about your business. Um, I learned to let people win to win, man. I did. I, did, I really learned that. Like I sometimes some people I know that they lying. And, Sometimes you can, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, but I just allow people to win. I'm like that a lot with women. You gotta be. You're not gonna win an argument with a woman. I know. Y'all never go. Last night I'm gonna get home. Problem with God and my vet tech, my youth handler, my woman are all prepping to go through it. Big dog. 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 Big and all three of them trying to get it off, they snap the entire spigot off the house. I'm on a well. I'm in the middle of fire season, in the middle of firebrush country, on a well with finite water, and it's just shooting out the fucking thing. I'm like, go get the flashlight. She goes in to get the flashlight, and somehow they get distracted as water is shooting out the side of my house, and don't bring me the flashlight. So I go in, and I kind of snap. I was like, all right, verbal judo opportunity, <laughs> right? Uh, so I like look at her like, look, I have one job here, and it's to keep you guys safe and keep the house maintained. So my intensity regarding the flashlight was based on that, but I don't want you to miss, you know, interpret because if we fight right now, my win is you guys in the house being safe. So being that that's how I'm defining the win in this situation, I don't right. think we actually need to fight. And do you understand what I'm coming from? She's like, yeah. I was like, oh, that was cool. And I keep a little journal, all the conflicts <laughs> that I go through in a day, and I grade myself how I did. And I was like, yeah, I give myself a B on that, because I was, I was so mad. I mean, it was probably stuff, 30 gallons in two minutes. It was a lot. And I'm thinking like, yo, there's fires on all sides of us right now, and you guys is just letting the water go. Yeah, take that class. Verbal Judo. Verbal Judo. Written by George Thompson. It's beautiful. Is there a, a most intelligent type of dog that you let to your mother's like, or, what, or I would say, what is the most intelligent dogs that you That's a complicated question because I think we can use the word intelligence to project what we think. I think all dogs have kind of a baseline of intelligence, and then there are dogs that are more biddable, yeah. dogs that are going to want to be with you right. and do what you want to do more than other dogs. So for me, it's less intelligence. It's biddable versus non-biddable. Um, so for me, I think the dogs that are the easiest to train, Border Collies tend to be very easy to train. Uh, the German Shepherd's a little more biddable. Uh, but then you get certain dogs like the Dutch Shepherd uh, or even the Anatolian Shepherd that have developed almost kind of independent of man. So like my Anatolian loves me because yeah, I've taught yeah. him to, but naturally but he wants to be on the mountain. He don't yeah. need me. And he knows it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. But they're, they're different dogs, I think. I've trained so many different types of dogs. Um, but because I didn't start training dogs, I started with large cats and primates. Damn. I had to learn how to communicate with a, a tiger that is not interested in uh, anything I have to say. Right. <laughs> and will kill me if I say it the wrong way. So that's kind of like I me. Mean, I, 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 so that was kind of like me asking what's the most intelligent human yeah. like, right, our race. Right. Yeah, all right. But I, yeah, there's certainly <laughs> dogs that can do some interesting things, but I've seen it across the board. I mean, I have a dog named Crixus, who's a Doberman Malinois mix, and I, I'd like to think he's a pretty smart dog, but all the dogs are smart. He just wants to work with me. Yeah. Mm. You know, he expresses that differently than the other dogs. Yeah. Why do the police use canines? I think when the idea was hatched, it was a. Uh, a form of non-lethal deterrence, right? Most of the time, canine unit here, I'm gonna send the dog in. Right. The guy's coming out with his hands up because you can negotiate to some extent with another human. Once yeah. that dog is in, the dog yeah, is yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah, most bad guys yeah, don't yeah. want that because they've seen TV. So I think that's where it started. Now, because it's not based on merit, it's not based on your dog handling skills, it's based on time on the force yeah. and 
Yeah, pretty much the seniority and do people like you. And then guys who are going for it aren't going for it for the most part because they love dogs. They're going for it because they want a custom car and they want unlimited overtime. Right? If you got a dog, even in a big city like LA, the canine units are going to be at every Beyonce concert, every Lady Gaga concert, every major sports game. And, you know, these guys are probably clearing 250, 300,000. So that's like a life hack for a cop yes. or, or a job hack. Absolutely. And there are cops who love dogs and do it, but my experience, though limited, I guess, uh, to maybe five states in the U.S., it tends to be based on seniority, and guys just want another weapon. You get to walk around with this big intimidating yeah. street sweeper, and it makes you feel, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. well, what you don't see is a lot of the uh, canine officers are getting bit themselves, probably more than the bad guys. <laughs> oh, I more than the bad guys? guys? More than the bad guys, yeah. yeah. There's a, a level of uh, non-compliance being disrespect, right? Do what I said to do because I said it. And if you don't, you're disrespecting me. So they bring that attitude to this wild animal, right? All right, all right. And do what I say. And, and a lot of these dogs are not unclear on I have the skills to also kill you, right? I'm supposed to get the bad guys, but I also have the skills to get your ass. Right. So they come in <clears throat> and the dog is looking at them like, okay, you got one more of those. So I get a lot of calls. <laughs> I got calls from uh, some, some different sheriffs and police like, yo, come get him. I got a call at 3 o'clock in the morning to come get a dog out of the patrol car in Riverside. Yeah, damn. Why, why, why? Because the dog was just being so violent? Like, the, like handler, barking the, or the, the handler and the dog had a disagreement. The handler thought because he's the handler and he's the cop. Oh, so he's more attached to him. The dog is actually more attached to the wife because the wife does all the feeding. So even when they argue now, they got to either put the dog up or they got to get in the car and drive down the street and argue. Because the dog is like, she feeds me, this is my mom. Yes, I work with you, but that's my mom. I love her. But in this particular situation, I don't know what he did exactly. He wasn't particularly transparent about it. He just called me like, can you come get the dog out of the car? Every time I reach in, he's trying to, trying to snap me. So I drove all the way to Riverside, got the ball out, playing with the dog, walking, took him to the kennel, and then... Got paid and drove back to Santa Clarita. <laughs> it's a long drive. Yeah, it's a long drive. What's the, what's the most gangster thing you've ever seen? I mean, how do you define gangsters? I've seen some crazy stuff with these dogs. Dogs and human beings. Do you think dogs are crazier than human beings? He he has a lot of experiences. experiences. That, by the way, he just yeah, I've seen a dog. See that <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a dog successfully indicate on cancer uh, ten out of ten times. What? What? Yeah, you can train the dog on certain kind of amino acids and protein things. You know, with the body same with diabetes, but this dog what? hit on cancer patients blind too. It wasn't like the handler didn't even know. It was just a blind thing. They had a line of ten people. The dog would have to lay down in front of the person who was sick, and the dog did it, you know, 10 different sample sets successfully 10 out of 10 times. That was pretty gangster to me. But then if we're talking on a protection level, um, I seen... It's crazy. <laughs> I seen a dog. Uh, it was It's a multi-man attack. So imagine you have the dog, me, him, and two other guys come, and we do it. So four guys jump dude. This dog jumps out of the truck. And it's giving out pain to everybody. Then one dude grabs the briefcase and takes off. So while the dog is biting this man over here, the, the handler said, Out! The dog outed. Here! The dog came. And then he sent him. And the dog chased dude about 200 yards down, bit dude up, and brought the, the briefcase back. That was, that was I excellent. I need that dog. That was excellent work. What was that? That was a canine? No, this uh, dog belongs to a Russian real estate mobile. Yeah, he's got a good dog. But for him, his biggest concern is kidnapping when he travels. Um, he actually was just gracious enough to let us use his private jet. I don't know if you guys saw that. He just copped the G55 and uh, let us use it a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, so we the dogs jet. and everything. It was cool. But so for the him, dogs on the jet? Yeah, man. Dogs on the jet. Dogs, dogs, on, dogs on the jet. Eight yeah. dogs on the jet. But for him, his biggest issue when he travels is kidnapping. He got to put that in one of your verses. Go yeah. ahead, dogs on the jet. I got my dogs on the jet. Yeah, it was nice. It was real nice. So when he travels, uh, his biggest concern for him and his family is kidnapping because a lot of times he has to hire local security. So he got that money. Yeah, right. Yeah, when he contacted right. me, he was like, I need an invisible insurance policy. So uh -huh. he trained the dog. You won't even know the dog there unless he calls the dog, but the dog is 100% ready. Oh, the time. What kind of dog is it? It's a Dutch Shepherd. 
Yeah, it's an all-black Dutch Shepherd, beautiful dog, and he's just with it, and he loves them girls, like his daughter, so the chances of you being able to, and they've had a couple situations where the dog was unclear as to whether or not people were being pressed. Uh, the nanny actually got upset with the girl and was reprimanding the girl. The nanny dog, instantly the dog came between her leg, the little girl's legs and was looking at the nanny like, all right, we're done with that, whatever that was. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. That's going to make you humble. Oh, I, that's what I was going to say. Be, speaking of that, what's the best method to calming down your dog? That's a great question right there. Yeah. Are we saying calm? Because there's multiple types of, I guess, unsettled. Is the dog upset or is the dog just energetic? To make the dog uh, tranquilo. 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 Relax. Suave. Relax. I mean, so, my, my girl, that's her. Uh, she got a dog. Her dog is wild. Wow. So, yeah, yeah we just talking about energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like uh, calm hands generally equals a calm dog. So when I'm petting my dogs, I'm going to move my hands very methodically and just kind of go slowly versus if I'm trying to rile my dog up, especially in a protection situation. You know, I got different cues for my dog. If I pinch that back flank, he knows he's about to get a bite. I don't have to say it because I don't want to be in court having that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegedly. Right? But, <laughs> yeah, so Allegedly. I'm going to be very calm. Soft boys. I want my dogs to calm down. He calmed all the way down because this dude is hyper. Yeah. Big dog. <laughs> One time I heard a quote, a tired dog can do no wrong. Like you can walk yeah. your dog a lot, you got sure. your dog exercising and doing stuff, then he good to go. But it's when your dog is excited and you got way too much energy and he turns <laughs> up. Yeah. And you didn't take him out to walk and you neglected. Exercise is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nutrition Water. exercise is important. And then it'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be wild. I don't think you should have a dog if you don't have time to spend with him. You don't spend no time with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's kind of like abuse to me. Like, you don't spend no time with your dog. It's like, tough. A lot of people are in that position, and uh, I'm calling them pandemic dogs, but a lot of people, you know, stay at home orders. All right, cool. I'm going to go get a dog. And now that things are opening back up, I don't know. <laughs> What about potty training, man? I know you gave me that potty training tip that every time, because he was peeing in the crib and that was pissing me yeah. off. And I was getting upset. <laughs> so he told me every time that the dog go pee outside, uh, <laughs> pee pee party. Yeah, all my dogs work on a timer. So what I do is I bring them outside. I, call I count them. down from 20. They don't know what's happening. As soon as they go, or let's say they don't go, because that's more realistic. The dog's not going to go in 20 seconds. Then I'll take the dog to a new location and start counting down again and then to a new location. The dog finally goes, oh. and I mark it. Yes, good potty, treat, 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 treat. You do that for like a week straight, you're gonna get to a point where your dog's looking at you like, okay, I know this game. Now you go outside, 20, 19, the dog's going, and then sprinting back to you. So now you got potty on command, and you can do that on road trips, wherever you gotta go. Whenever you gotta do it, take the dog outside, count down, give them the treats. But a lot of people aren't educating their dogs on what to do only what not to do. Don't go right there. Don't, you know. So the dog is training them, actually. Yes. Yes. Most uh, of the time. Most of the time, it, our dogs are training us. I call uh, new doggy dog. I, I, I say we in the PPP outside gang. <laughs> Cause we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used to do that shit outside too with them just to um, make them feel comfortable. It's beautiful. But it's like, that's what we do. We do this shit outside, man. We in the squad. And then I give him a special treat. And I'm like, oh, you got a special treat. You did PPP <laughs> on the floor. You did PPP in the house. Yeah. That's but I appreciate that game that you told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Game already, man. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like the PP parties. And then crate training is important. Dogs tend to not go where they sleep. So putting a dog in a crate and then having them on a timer, like a schedule, right? I know I feed my dogs at 7 p.m. I know they're going to have to go to the bathroom by the next morning at 6.30. I know that, so everybody's out by 6.30. Uh, so that's important, that crate training. Yeah, because they won't go. It's like isolation, you know what I mean? You might think it's a uh, crate, but you got to do it. Yeah. I was going to ask you, is there such thing as a in-house dog and an outside dog? Or is, is there certain type of dogs that absolutely should not be in the house? And certain type of dogs absolutely should not be outside. Yeah, so that's a tough question. I think these dogs have developed pretty well for the last you know, 150,000 years outside. So I think all dogs are outside dogs. But you do have to factor in 
your environment. So if you have a pug, for instance, a pug where I live is probably going to become coyote food or owl food. <laughs> so you got to factor that I wouldn't have a dog that small outside by itself. I'd have that dog outside with another like dog. Like a little pack. Like a couple yeah. Of but um, I train management for inside and outside. My biggest push is your dog needs to be able to manage yourself in all environments and god forbid you get sick or get hurt or you got to go out of town you don't want to hand off a dog that's going to hurt somebody or destroy the things so i try and go to your bed don't go in the house you know quiet i have all these different things that if i needed to go somewhere and hand you my leash you're going to be able to transition that dog right away did you believe dogs existed in dinosaur times i do and maybe not in the form that they are today but they was they was wolfing yeah. or a dog. They were they were Absolutely. existing all back then with velociraptors <laughs> and T Rexes and Stegosauruses. Do you yeah. believe in aliens? And if you do, do you think they have pets? Yeah. Would an alien be walking around with a dog? I would I would hope so. I think they're aliens. I have a client who is uh, part of the space police. If you can imagine, she was, she was uh, promoted to the. Donald Trump Space Police. She works on Area 52 out in... Uh, What's that? That sounds like a movie that should come on Comedy Central. Space Police! Yeah. Space Police! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, but it's that yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. It sounds like a Reno 911, like, Space Police! <laughs> uh, yeah. Alien life form. Do I believe We're beneath his face. <laughs> so, do I think they're like green Martians walking around? Like, no, but... Yeah, yeah I think they're other life forms, for sure. I do too. I think it's, I mean, we got all these, we got all these, like a billion galaxies. There's, there's a lot going on out there. Just the energy between the dogs, how the dog communicates to me, and just so I can tell his mood or his vibe. Man. It's kind of like going out to the island, and I'm not fluent in Spanish, but, you know, me es yo es okay. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's the end, though. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of that way with the dog. Where it's like, he got a PPP. I already know it's time to take him outside. Because yeah. when, when he wants to walk, he'll just, you know what I'm saying, be really annoying and be up under my legs and be like pointing at the leash and all of that. Where it's like, it's time to get his walk on. So it all, you know. I it, had it's crazy. Make like, a really interesting argument. She said that if aliens did come to Earth, they would probably think dogs are in charge. Cause they got humans picking up their poop, putting their food down, oh, prepping their beds. Right. So the aliens would look and be like, oh, so we're going to deal with these guys. And <laughs> yeah, so, dogs are more in tune with the universe, too. Absolutely. They use way point. more senses than us. That, the biological clock, you know, he's going to let you know every day. Why does it happen like one of the, because, you know, it's a dog community, right? So one of the dogs starts barking or howling, and they're like, oh, my dog is just right outside, whatever's going on, beats will be playing, we'll be and he'll just leave the session, leave everything, go outside and start howling with all the other dogs. What is that connection about? Like, have you noticed yeah, that? So the bark is generally a uh, distance increasing signal. Dogs want something to go away, they bark. Right? If we're hunting and we start barking, we lost all the rabbits. So, um, the whine is a distance decreasing signal. So they learn that it's puppies, whine, 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 and mom is going to come find me. The howl is generally used to bring a pack, a wolf pack anyway, together. Uh, they're going to use it as a type of familial bonding or just kind of pack bonding. You'll see it with wolves. They'll be out, the alpha will let out a howl, and everyone else will howl after that to say, we're also here with you. Just learn something. Yeah, yeah that's so, powerful. I like how you broke that down. The bark is this, the howl is this, right. yeah, the squeal is this. So the bark. So if I'm at a girl's house and the dog is barking, the dog wants me to go away. Yeah. So, and then attach because they <laughs> feel like I'm taking their mommy away from them. Something. <laughs> we teach protection dogs the opposite, though. So, I'm doing Tai Chi Chi Gong right now. Okay. I did Taekwondo, but now uh, in Tai Chi Chi Gong, they say all the movements you do, I'm ready for any kind of fuck shit that comes my way. Because yeah. you throw a punch and we do cloud hands to block the punch because it just mm. look like wax on, wax off. But you yeah. throw something and then you just automatically mm. block it. It's beautiful. Yeah. So it's crazy because also if I never go into combat or go into a fight, Sifu was like, when the last time you been in a fight, brother? And I was like, God damn, I can't really remember. It's been some years. It's been some time. He was like, see, you hurt yourself before other people hurt you. And I was like, uh -huh. yeah, you're right. I stumbled into stuff and got too drunk or did something to where I put myself through more problems. So he's like, anything we do here can heal your internal organs. So, like, you do certain moves for your kidneys, certain moves for your lung circulation, certain moves for the stomach, certain moves for the heart, certain moves for really, you know, they got all the, the elements and the aspects. Mm. And it all connects to, like, the subconscious mind, too. So, it's all like a, 
the practice of the meditation. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's like a standing meditation or like a movement meditation. Yeah, I practice I, Wing Chun, which is similar. Yeah, it's, it's in the yeah. same realm. Um, that Cry of God's more for that Bagua. 5% of situations combat, where right. everything's gone wrong. That's right. the reason I like, what do I do when everything is gone wrong yeah, and I can't yeah. get away? That's what the crowd is for. Really, yeah. when you in there with the wolves, when the alpha yeah, wolf, like, uh, alpha wolf right. come to you, then you can just hit that crowd on ground or hit that, um, they hit that, they bite too hard. The <laughs> dog is probably going to max out maybe 400 pounds of pressure per square inch. The wolf is, yeah, you're dead. There's no way. I feel I could put her in a sleeper hole and be able to just be like, well, <laughs> you can try. The and then you, wake, the and then you wake up from the dream. <laughs> yeah. The other 40 wolves won't like that. They're going to be like, hey. Uh, yeah. I survived. <laughs> they, they, they said, they said that, how you say Crawford McGraw? How you say properly? Crawford McGraw. Yeah, they said it's for uh, the Israeli soldiers and yeah. in close combat. Yeah. Like, when I was in the Vatican, and somebody was acting up. And you know the dudes that look like clowns? Like they got the, I ain't going to say what be disrespectful. Yeah, you, know, yeah, they, you know what I mean? They said them dudes is mercenaries. They was doing like uh-huh. some, they was doing like some moves. Like they, like they took it down a dude that was quick. Yeah. But the, you know, when you send them up there, they look like clowns. They got the sword and they playing. And they, them nah, dudes ain't no right. joke. The Vatican is a, is a Fortune 500 company. Right, right exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And that's own country. Detail. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Where's, Where's your favorite place you've been to in your travels? I know you real well travel. You've been a lot of places. So if you would recommend that we go somewhere, yeah. what do you recommend? Like top three places that we check out? Okay, Israel's got to be on there. Israel, Israel's amazing. The Tell energy me. there is great. Sea. Never been, man. It's beautiful. The Red Sea is amazing. Uh, it's not what I, at least for me, it was not what I thought. It is uh, virtually impossible to go underwater. Yes. Wow. Saw content, so, uh, wow. so that yeah. was a thing. Uh, I just got back from Vietnam, and uh, I had a lot of preconceived notions in my head about Vietnam because mm-hmm. of all, all the propaganda we get here in America. But it was beautiful. They loved their dogs. They recognized that the black and brown men were not behind any decisions made yeah. to impact their country. So it was, I got a lot of money awesome. to dawn. Yeah, I got like a stack of that money. Yeah, Vietnam was beautiful. They actually gave me a key to the city, which was cool. Oof, yeah. Oof. Yeah, respect. Yeah, yeah. yeah key to nice. the city, homie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was nice. And uh, I got it at the yeah, house. Well, that means we brought we brought uh, protection. Yeah, right. Whatever that means, we're not even gonna go into that unless he wants to. For the story time, story time. <laughs> oh, what? Right. Key to the city. They love the oh, oh, certain yeah. type of people are gonna love you extra when you got a key to the city. Yeah, no, it was beautiful. And we were there training dogs. <laughs> What's crazy is that, like, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but the military and the police and the mafia are kind of the same thing. Oh. So we were training dogs and uh, they, 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 they enjoyed it. That's usually the thing in third world countries. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting, too, because, you know, you train dogs here and, you know, you take your dogs out on the street. One of the guys that I was training his dog there was a cop. He was like, yeah, you want to go on a ride, ride along with me tonight? And I was like, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah dude, we can do it. You can get the dog a bite. Right. Like, but you didn't get the dog a bite, like, on a person? He was like, yeah. And I was like, like do we already have a bad guy in mind? He was like, no, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's I was a great like, question. He's like, already somebody here. <laughs> it's suspects everywhere. Let's go. Yeah, I was like, no, I don't want to be there for that. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. Yeah, but Vietnam was beautiful, and I think... Been to recently. I really like Japan. Mm. I was surprised though um, there wasn't as many English speaking people in Japan as I thought there would be. China, everybody spoke English. So it was yeah. pretty easy to. Yeah, yeah. Be like, so me, my son. Was I my Japan was really nice though. I got to see uh, some cool things there. And you were born in Seattle? Yeah, born in Seattle. Born, born and raised in Seattle? Yeah. Or you I bounced mean, around? I bounced around a lot, but yeah, Seattle's always been home. Did you Seattle. have a dog since you was a little kid? No, actually, you met my first dog. Lazarus was my first Lazarus dog. Lazarus was the first one? Yeah. What? Respect, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. My oldest dog is four. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know. I know uh, sis had a rabbit, so I didn't know if y'all grew up with the... Um... No, I got attacked by two German Shepherds growing up, so I hated dogs wow. up until probably mm. 2012. 
like attack the tag. You know, it's how hard it is to uh, miss school when you got a black mom. But like, I got to miss school for two months. Wow. That's how bad my bites was. Wow. So Damn. yeah, I wasn't messing with dogs at all. That's no joke. Crazy, I went full circle and now uh, yeah, I would train them. And you in there with wolves. The wolves are actually helped me understand the dogs better. Than <laughs> I was just like, that's a test, bro, what you just said. It's yeah, so crazy. The wolves are awesome. I think if people started with wolves, they'd have a greater appreciation for dogs. Because wow. we abuse the domestication process. The dogs love us, they need us, they want to be around us, and we beat them up if they don't do what we want. You can't really do that with the wolf. Wow. So I think because I started on that side, I treat dogs the same way I treat wolves. Same amount of respect, same amount of decency. That's what it is. Yeah. Are people taking advantage of dogs? I feel like sometimes people take advantage of dogs. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they, uh, I don't know if people say they help dogs or whatever. I just feel like some people got dogs and they really don't give them enough attention. Like, they kind of like emotional slaves. Like, they, yeah. they only give their dog attention out of hardship or when they need right. them. But other than that, they just in the house. Don't give them no they, treats. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of hostages right. out there. Uh, we we really focus on that in our uh, in our training. We try to have compliant dogs that want to work for us, which yeah. requires building that bond initially. But right. my biggest thing is with the medical service dogs, they need to find work time and they need to find off time. And right. you get a lot of these dogs that are superstars out the gate, but they burn out because they're working 24 hours a day, never get a break. And you know, people tend to it's all about me and my my ailments yeah. and my disability. Yeah. And like imagine having to bring your boss home with you. Oh, and your boss right. at any point can wake you up, take your food, you know, throw yeah, you outside, yeah, put you in a crate. Yeah, like yeah, people don't really think about it in those times, but yeah, I try to. Yeah, that's all I be trying to give you a look at. Like, yeah, yeah you gotta look at the, you know, what I mean, overstand the dog situation, man. Yeah, I try to build that in. My dogs get a lot of engagement. Yeah. They get a lot of play. You know, we got like four hundred thousand square feet, so they out quite a bit. Dang, doing what dogs do, chasing rabbits, chasing coyotes, whatever it is. They are doing at that moment. I mean, you got a doggy resort. Yeah, it's a nice place. I like it. Mm -hmm. They're not particularly happy to have me in the community, unfortunately, but on paper, it's great. Right. But you got your 40 acres and your dogs. Yeah, well, that's what we've been fighting for. And not really the mule. I ain't getting no the mule. But, <laughs> no, I'm going to get the mule. I'm gonna, I just got a horse. Uh, I'm not going to need a horse in the valley. And I got to get a mule for the horse to hang out with. That's uh, great, bro. Because they're herd animals. You can't just have a single horse and they go crazy. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's selfish. Yeah, I'm going to get a mule, though. I don't know what I'm going to name my mule, but something. Do the dogs respond well to your music? Do they listen to it? Like, does it soothe them or put them in a certain energy or a certain vibe? What new music stuff you got going to? Yeah, well, as a, you know, not a bragging point, it's kind of eccentric, but I'm a certified Reiki healer. But I just work on dogs. Like it's, it's Reiki only on dogs. Yeah. So I play a lot of music. Uh, so Shoku Bernard Ray and uh, Shoku Ray, Sayaki yeah. and Hashan Shinzone. Yeah, man. You gotta come through. But I work on dogs. A lot of my military guys when they get back with their dogs and the dogs who've gone through trauma. So I get calls from shelters like we just got some dogs from the Lancaster basement, you know, that were fighting and we need some help. So I'll come in and try to redirect some of that energy for them. But the dogs tend to respond well. I don't play necessarily like, I got a training playlist <laughs> called Shepherd's Playlist and it's got mm. like Gucci Man and DMX, of, right? A lot of DMX on yeah, it. Yeah, my dog like DMX. But in terms of just chilling, dogs, right? we listen to Bernardo Beats, you know, a lot right. of uh, healing. I did that when Noob was a puppy. I'm, I'm sure it helped. Right? You can tell, he just got a good vibe. He's a chill dog. Yeah. Yeah, I was playing all that stuff. That's why he'd be so playful a lot of the time. I feel like it was all those um, binaural and what's the, what's the other name? Of it? Tibetan singing bowls. I yeah. play that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all Salfeggio. Yep. Yeah. That's the a good tones. thing to do that. Dogs usually tones. take on the personality of their owner. So uh -huh. when I came in, I kind of knew where he was going to be at. Just knowing you, like, he's going to be chill. Yeah. But sometimes he be wilding the fuck out, bro. I, mean, I guess a young too. dog. He's going through puberty. He's sometimes he's a wild boy. Wild boy. Wild boy. <laughs> wild boy. It's all relative too. Like I got some really high drive dogs, and my clients would be like, "Oh, my dog's out of control." And I'm like, one in particular was having this conversation, and I got ducks and rabbits and guinea fowl and chickens. So the coyotes will come, and they know my dogs are really with it. So they don't actually come onto the property, but they'll perch. And in this one particular situation, they'll try to send a female that's in heat out to 
lure your male dogs out. Mm -hmm. So my Anatolian goes, and I'm like, this might be an ambush. So I had to let the whole squad go. Damn. They gone for like 15 minutes. Wow. I'm talking to my client about how out of control her dog is. This is what she's telling me. And my dogs bring back five, six different parts of coyote, and they're all covered in blood, and they all just drop it in front of me. Sit oh, down. She's, That's you know, story she's doing time. this. That's story time right there. That's <laughs> she's crazy. I'm like, so this to me is a lot, right? What you're dealing with is just home management issues, but yeah, it's all relative. Man, all time. Yeah, that was a story time, time right there. Yeah, that was when I first yeah. moved in too. I was like, you know, I'm a city dude, so yeah. bringing back yeah. coyote chunks was like, <laughs> like we gotta have a house meeting, right? Yeah, yeah. House meeting. Damn. Yeah. Real talk. You have a studio up there? I do. I gotta have uh, I gotta have your cousin come through and set it up for me, man. I don't know how to set up any of that, but yeah, we got yeah, everything. Kano got skills. We got everything full studio now, and I actually bought a bunch of new mics, and uh, I got the machine, got the new joint. That's yeah, bro. Nice. So you got the happy place going on because you just got everything that you know brings you that personal yeah. happiness all right within mm -hmm. your reach, and you just ducked off. So if it's the end of LA and LA burns or whatever to be going on or what's happening, farm and all that. That's what I'm saying. You far off enough yeah. where you can just watch it on CNN or watch it wherever. Where it's like, hey, I'm glad that I wasn't. <laughs> When the zombies attacked or whatever. It's been a concerted that, effort, though, yeah. to get me out. Funny enough, I think what they're worried about in that particular community is young, brown, black people with jobs and income buying places out there. So they don't want that. I've yeah. had the police to my place 11 times. Damn. They actually arrested me for terrorism, if you can believe that. The DA what? saw that and threw it out immediately. I think it lasted saw you went to 70 Israel. seconds. <laughs> they, yeah, I got... Because there was some hey, trespassers. your passport, going through your passport. No. And it was like, this guy over here. There was some, some a white couple, and like you've been to my place, so everything after the, the, the paved road is private. Uh -huh. You're trespassing after that first quarter mile. My driveway is what, like two miles, three miles long? Mm -hmm. So they all the way on my property walking in. My dogs is out, and they do their jobs. So I drive down there, and like, yo, I'm the new owner. Happy to meet you, uh, different circumstances, but you can't just cross through my property. Well, you need to get fencing, be that as it may. I'm telling you now, it's private property. I'm not going to afford you the opportunity of a conversation next time. Go home. Six days later, they called their people. The sheriff showed up to my house, seven deep. We're here about uh, threats. It's like, well, I haven't called the police about threats, but thank you, gentlemen. No, we're here because you threatened somebody. Uh, no, I haven't. But before we go, even go down that path, let me introduce myself. My name is John Anthony. This is my property. There are 25 cameras rolling right now. So we're clear. I also yeah. teach the court testimony preparation class that the police are mandated to take. So the chances of me saying something like that is ridiculous. I'm a professional. Well, can we see your license? Yep, yeah, here it is. Can we see the dog? Sure, I'll let you see the dog. I'll bring him out. I'm going to put him in a down stay, give you the opportunity to observe my dog from the other side of that fence, unless you have a warrant to be on this side of the fence. Then I'm going to put my dog away. So I'm going to ask you gentlemen not to shoot my dog, please. Cameras are rolling. Bring the dog out. They see it. Put the dog up. You know, can we get your license? Yeah, I give them my license. They run it. It's clean. They go down to my neighbor's place. Come back. You're under arrest. Well, since we're there now, what are you arresting me for? 21st police, uh, 21st century policing standards say you got to tell me I'm not being arrested. No, we don't. Okay. What about my rights? You gonna read me those? No. Okay. Put me in the car. Took me to Lancaster Station. Charged me with terrorism. Nobody was hurt. Put my bail at seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow. Came home the next day. DA saw that and was like, "No, I'm not." prosecuting a black man arrested on his own property because <laughs> trespassers, people who actively told you they were breaking the law, wow. gave you hearsay to go on. It was it was nuts. So we, we've been dealing with that. Animal control has been in my place 13, 14 times. Uh, Department of Water and Power, regional planning actually showed up once to investigate Mr. Came through that. It's crazy. Hmm? He never came through that. Nah, nah. I mean, I, I wrote the book on a lot of this stuff. So yeah. even with animal controls visits, I've never been cited once. Damn. Ever. I think I lead the county in the most number of visits without one ticket ever being written. <laughs> so there's a Respect. lot of resistance <laughs> trying to get me out of there because they're worried about you guys wanting to buy ranches and come out there and, and, and they don't want it to happen. They don't want that. Yeah. But it's all kind of pushed us towards potentially relocating. 
Mm. Might be relocating to Atlanta, maybe Texas. Somewhere down the street from Kanye West. Anyway, he in Wyoming? He is in Wyoming. I don't know how happy they are about him being out there either. But yeah, I mean, Wyoming, Idaho, I'd love to be able to do something like that. I spent some time in Idaho and Utah. Yeah, Idaho is just beautiful, man. A lot of hot springs. It's nice out there. White kids selling uh, homemade jerky. Yeah, uh, one of my clients is a, <laughs> is a Marine who yeah. grew up on the Frank Church wilderness of no return. Oh, you can only access this place by a uh, plane or by horseback. Mm. Damn. And he grew up there, and like he's, you know, he's he got real, some stories. Yeah, he's got some interesting stories. Yeah, if you can only get there with the plane and a horse. Yeah, so. it's the only way to access this place that he grew up, and his family still owns it. I think it's like 4,000 acres, something crazy. I don't know if I'd ever want to live there, because, like, say you got to go get a blunt or something. See what I mean? We got our best Romano's papers, but say it's like, where is a lighter or where is a blunt? And you got to go 4,000 acres away just to, <laughs> to find a liquor store to find something that's going to have that. Buying bulk, maybe. But what if you get to that last one of the bulk? It's that time to go to the plane. Your plane. Yeah, jump in the plane and fly there. Fly Apple out. foil paper. Yeah. <laughs> I got dogs on my jet. <laughs> I'm not my dogs down dog. here on the jet. He's got a German <laughs> Shepherd named Old Glory that is. Don't pick uh, up this lighter, sandwich. get back on my jet, and go right back up to the house. Yeah. <laughs> you probably just grow your own stuff out there, I imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Grow your own yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If it's legal in that state. I have no idea. Probably not. But if they need a horse to get to you anyway, you right. might want to take those chances. And I don't know how much, you know, California people violate your property law and rights and all that. These other places, Texas, Idaho, Wyoming, they they killing people for that. Yeah, you shot. So you come out four thousand miles to cause trouble. Four thousand acres, you might not make it back. Right. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm brother Juju. Hey, it's two bro chat your pain pain. Yeah. Ashes, also known as John Anthony. That's our brother Ashes, John Anthony, and his hey. brother Germano. Hey. 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 Hey.